Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our virtual college visit series. We are very happy to have you here. We are really fortunate today to have with us Mr. Stephen Murphy, um, who is the Director of Military and Veteran Student Services at the Catholic University of America. Uh, and he is going to share some really great information with us today uh, about ROTC programs, how that works in relation to the university and other universities. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions about today's presentation, please feel free to either put them in the chat or you can certainly ask them afterwards or reach out to Mr. Murphy after the presentation as well. So with that, I am going to go ahead and hand it off to Mr. Murphy to get us started. And again, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Edwards. So my name is Stephen Murphy, and I, as I said, am the Director of Military and Veteran Student Services here at the Catholic University of America. Our three main mission sets we have here is one, uh, as a Director of Military and Veteran Student Services, I serve as the dedicated military-affiliated students point of contact within the Dean of Students Office. Um, and when we say military-affiliated students, that definition means not only ROTC cadets and midshipmen, but active duty service members, veterans, military dependents, and military spouses. I serve as the ROTC program director, um, so coordinating our support to our Army, Navy, and Air Force ROTC programs, which we participate in via our um, involvement in the DC consortium of universities. I also am an Army Reserve Officer, and in that capacity, I have served as an adjunct lecturer and instructor at the Army ROTC Battalion, which we are affiliated to, which is the Hawaii Battalion. Our office serves as a main career liaison partnership between our academic departments and the University Center for um, Academic and Career Services, and we work as also to improve uh, networking and student events for our military affiliated students to increase both their student experience as well as to increase their resiliency um, by building that sense of community here at the university. And then last but not least, I serve as the military affiliated student admissions liaison for all graduate levels in schools, or all degree levels in schools, excuse me. So the first question, so our brief today is gonna to be focusing mainly on the second mission set we talked about as the uh, director of all on-campus ROTC operations. So for students interested in joining the Army, the Navy, or the Air Force as a commissioned officer, one of the first uh, decisions you're going to have to make is whether you want to commission via ROTC or via the service academies. For de um, in terms of definitions, when I'm speaking of the service academies, I'm speaking about uh, United States Military Academy at West Point for the Army, United States Naval Academy um, in Annapolis, Maryland for the Navy, United States Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado, um, United States Coast Guard Academy um, in New London, Connecticut, and uh, United States Merchant Marine Academy in New York. So for those interested in service academies, there are certain similarities and differences between these commissioning sources. First, for similarities, um, you'll have the same end goal. Once you commission, um, none of your soldiers or superiors will be able to tell where you commissioned from. It's either a second lieutenant or an ensign. You have the opportunities to attend milita similar military training events, such as summer cruises um, for the Navy, as well as military schools like Airborne and Air Assault for the Army ROTC um, interested students. For differences, um, if you commission via a service academy, you are committed to serve on active duty. If you commission via the uh, ROTC, you have the option and uh, opportunity to commission via the National Guard or the reserves as well. Um, as you if you've been doing research, you'll find that the service academies have a very STEM heavy curriculum. Um, in ROTC, um, that is not necessarily the case. Um, but one notable exception to that is um, Navy ROTC, which almost, which is their uh, career um, academic path is modeled off the service academy. So there are multiple STEM courses that you will have to take um, if you're interested in Navy ROTC. Another difference is that you will have the traditional college lifestyle if you attend an ROTC institution such as Catholic University of America. Um, as an ROTC student, you will balance your academic requirements with your military training, your military classes. Um, but overall, it is not a full immersion military experience that you would get at a service academy. One other notable difference is that if you attend a service academy, all students are on a full scholarship. Um, you'll have to compete for scholarships um, and funding through the ROTC route. So I'm going to be going over in depth Army, Navy, and Air Force ROTC um, for the remainder of this briefing. Um, so in terms of definitions, so 
Catholic University of America is a member of what's called the DC Consortium of Universities. So if you would like to participate in Air Force ROTC, you'll be participating in Detachment 130, which is headquartered at Howard University in DC. If you would like to participate in Navy ROTC, you'll participate in the National Capital uh, Battalion at George Washington University. And if you're interested in Army ROTC, you'll participate in the Hoya Battalion, which is at Georgetown University. All students are treated the same within the specific um, unit, no matter what school you go to. Um, and if you're interested in applying for any of these programs, you will, have, you will apply to the requisite ROTC program uh, via the links we will discuss, as well as Catholic University's uh, main undergraduate admissions application. You will not have to apply to be admitted into one of our, um, to, into our consortium partner universities to take classes there. So for Air Force ROTC, uh, for after completing all Air Force ROTC and academic degree requirements, Air Force, cadet, Air Force ROTC cadets will accept the commission as second lieutenants in the Air Force or Space Force appointed by the President of the United States. The length of your initial service commitment depends upon your career. Most officers have a four-year active duty service commitment. Pilots have a 10-year active duty service commitment, and both combat systems officers and air battle managers have six-year service commitments upon completion of their respective trainings. Nursing graduates accept the commission in the Air Force Nurse Corps and serve four years on active duty after completing their licensing examination. Air Force ROTC is separated between the general military course for freshmen and sophomores prior to the summer training at Maxwell Air Force Base. After the completion of your summer uh, military training at Maxwell Air Force Base, you'll be enrolled in what's called the professional officer course. Um, that is for juniors and seniors to participate in. So in this slide, which goes over the program requirements for Air Force ROTC. So just take a second to look over all this. If you have any questions, um, we can address these in the Q&A period. Moving on, for, if you are applying for an Air Force ROTC scholarship, um, the two main air majors of focus are on this slide. So the Air Force is looking for specifically those students who are looking to pursue academic paths and technical majors or foreign language majors. If you are interested in these programs, you'll have more scholarship opportunities available to you. So I'll take another second to look over this slide. So on this slide, um, this goes over the seven step um, process for how to apply to Air Force ROTC. If you're interested in applying to this program, uh, please reach out to me. I've to the completion of this meeting and we get, get you in contact with the recruiting officer over at uh, Detachment 130, which is Major Tara Cotton. So also one note, the uh, fall completion date, I just bumped up the date. It was currently for this admission cycle, it was 14 January, 2021. Um, they haven't released the official date yet. So for projection sake, I put it down as 14 January, 2022. So the next portion of our brief will be going over Navy ROTC. So the Naval Reserve Officers Training Program, otherwise known as Navy ROTC, is a multi-year program that runs concurrently with a student's normal college or university educational course of study. In addition to a normal academic workload leading to a baccalaureate degree, Navy ROTC students attend classes in Naval Science, participate in Navy ROTC units, uh, in Navy ROTC unit for drill, uh, physical training, and other requirements. Uh, these are generally taught to the leadership principles and the high ideals of being a military officer. During summer break between school years, Navy ROTC students participate in a variety of training activities, such as summer cruises or for Marine option midshipmen to shadow an active duty Marine officer. These sessions help students understand various career options as well as familiarize themselves with the military life. So this slide goes over the application standards for students who are interested in Navy ROTC. Um, so as you can see, same citizenship and medical requirements as per, uh, participating in Air Force ROTC. And here are the hard numbers in terms of the academics you will need to be in the range for if you like to participate in this program. So this slide goes over the financial aid offerings that come with winning a Air Force, a, correction, a Navy ROTC scholarship. So one note uh, for context, if you would like to participate in Air Force ROTC, you will need to have three years on campus to be able to participate in the program. Um, so with that, you need to have one year to complete your GMC requirements before going into your professional officer course. 
for a Navy ROTC, um, you need four years on campus. So this means that if you would like to participate in Navy ROTC in college, the preferred option is to apply via high school for a, um, a National Navy ROTC scholarship. If you are not selected or you missed the application deadline, you have the opportunity to walk on as a freshman for what's called a side load scholarship. Navy ROTC programs do not accept any students who are um, beyond their freshman year in college. So keep that um, in the back of your head for your timeline. So similar to Air Force ROTC, uh, Navy ROTC has a range of preferred majors. Um, if you are higher on their tier of major, the more likely it is that you will win a national scholarship. So on this slide, you see the tier one academic majors. These are the majors that will be um, that the majority of the scholarships will be allocated to, as you can see, also very STEM heavy. The second tier of academic majors is listed on this slide. Um, so it's a little bit wider range, um, but this is goes at this is basically in the, I would assess it as like the preferred majors. So tier one is the most preferred, tier two is preferred. So then tier three is if you are not interested in any of the majors that are listed in tier one or tier two, you're competing for tier three majors. But just for point of context, um, maybe ROTC has put out a standard that 85% of scholarship winners will come from either tier one or tier two majors. So if you really do not like the STEM field, this may not be a uh, career option for you, just for context. One other note, um, actually, I want to go back on this one. So the tiers of majors, um, that is specific to if you would like to commission as a Navy officer. Um, if you would like to commission as a Marine officer, that is slightly different. Um, you have the same process if you have to have four years on campus, uh, but your training will be slightly different in the Marine option uh, training path. They do not have uh, the tiers of academic majors. So if you are interested in the uh, naval domain, um, but again, you're not into STEM, I uh, might want to consider looking at the Marine option. So application process as well, a uh, very simple five-step process. Um, the Department of Defense Medical Examination and Review Board uh, on part five, that is a holistic um, medical assessment that you will go to during your application process. The, um, the goal of this physical is to identify any medical conditions that would preclude you from servicing a service in the military four years after uh, commission or four years after starting college and commissioning upon graduation. So the last program we're gonna be discussing is Army ROTC. So um, here are the minimum deliverables. Uh, if you are curious in participate, if you are interested in participating in Army ROTC, first be advised, this is the minimums. Um, this does not guarantee you a scholarship or participation. Um, this makes you eligible to participate. Uh, one major difference, however, from Army ROTC and Navy and Air Force ROTC is only two years are required. Um, if you're a graduate student, for example, you can participate in Army ROTC if you have two years on campus, um, and you can participate in Air Force ROTC if you have three years in your degree plan uh, or be on campus. Uh, Navy ROTC does not accept any students into their uh, ROTC commission guideline unless they're undergraduates. So one other um, interesting program of note that Army ROTC offers is what's called the Minuteman Scholarship. Uh, Minuteman Scholarship is an additional funding stream for those students who are committed to uh, pursuing a career in both the Army Reserve or the Army National Guard. Um, this is an attractive program, in my opinion, if you want to serve your country, but you're not sure if you want to go on the full experience on active duty. It will also help you to um, achieve programs such as getting a top seeker clearance or to have medical training that you might not have um, if you were a new normal uh, college graduate coming out of high school. Um, you are also entitled for an extra revenue stream of being uh, a drill pay. So for example, we have one student who is a Minuteman scholar uh, as a current junior in college here at Catholic. And one weekend a month, he drills with a unit in the Maryland National Guard, which he will join upon graduation. Uh, but he also picks up um, extra money through the National Guard um, in addition to the financial aid he gets by ROTC. So we discussed earlier, um, there's two, three, and four year scholarship offerings that are given at the purview of the professor of military science. You're eligible up to full tuition. Um, 
through Army ROTC scholarship, as well as a book, uniform, and fee allowance. There's also a $450, degree stip uh, $450 stipend per month for our students. Um, that is different from the Navy ROTC. As you can see, we've had a graduated scale of you earned more as you went through the program. Um, and Army ROTC is a flat $450 for all students. Uh, this picture is some of our Army ROTC cadets out in Quantico, uh, Virginia, um, doing what's called Operation Agile Leader, which is a prep for their culminating capstone training event. Um, over the summer. So um, pop quiz, what do you think a desired major is um, for those students who are interested in Army ROTC? Trick question. Um, they do not have any of the STEM requirements that Arm Air Force or Navy does. So that is one thing to consider if you are not a STEM based uh, scholar coming out of high school. So with that, that concludes my brief. Um, I'd like to open up the floor to any questions. I'll just say that we've definitely had a few students over the years, probably more than a few, do the Minuteman Scholarship, which has been such a great opportunity for them, you know, and, um, and we want more of our students to be aware of these opportunities if this is where their interest lies. Uh, and so just thank you for doing this today. It's very helpful for our students, our families, but also for us as um, school counselors. No, we hardly, that's one of our pro, like one of our goals during this next admission cycle is to try to recruit more Minuteman scholars. We 100% agree that it's a great program. And we also think that it helps um, find additional financial aid avenues for our students as well. So. I had a quick question. Uh, about five or six years ago, the Marine Corps through Navy ROTC was really looking for students who were planning on uh, going into getting a bachelor's in nursing. Is that still the case or is that kind of uh, that, that recruitment run, run its course? Um, so there's fluctuations from year to year um, based off of projections. So how all three branches of the military work is they go off of, there's a central HR office for all of them and they go look at projections off of people leaving the military versus projected inbounds to the military. Uh, and about five or six years ago, that might've been an area of concern that they were rapidly outpacing their uh, losses with their incoming gains. Um, but all three programs do offer um, nursing programs, uh, nursing ROTC needs. Uh, we have actually one graduating senior um, in the Army ROTC who's going off to be an Army nurse after graduating. Um, but Catholic University of America is actually happy you brought that up. Uh, we just invested in a multi million dollar nursing school, um, which are going to be breaking ground in the next couple of years. Uh, our nursing program is one of our best academic programs here on campus, and um, we are very excited to be proud uh, producers of Army, Navy, and Air Force nurses. So. so beyond today, if students have specific questions, what would be the best thing to do to reach out to one of you all directly or to admissions? What would you all suggest? If you are interested in the combination of Catholic University of America and ROTC, I will be your main point of contact uh, for that. Myself or Lizzie. So as a, we're a team here, uh, director and assistant director over in the Office of Military and Veteran Student Services. And, and then just for students that are interested in ROTC, would you just suggest they get in touch with like particular schools or programs or do you have any uh, advice in terms of that? Yes, so if you have a student who's interested in ROTC at a given school, um, each ROTC unit will have what's called a recruiting operations officer, um, and they serve just this whole battalion or the whole area. So as we discussed earlier at the beginning of this brief, it's more economical for the Department of Defense to assign area units as opposed to one for every single school. Um, so I would look up what unit is your school of choice is um, affiliated with. So for example, um, in Philadelphia, Villanova University, if you want to participate in Navy ROTC, the, um, the Navy ROTC unit is on campus at Villanova. If you want to participate in Army ROTC, though, it would be at Widener University. So you would go to Widener University, look up whoever their recruiting operations officer is, reach out to them. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you all very much for your time today. We really appreciated it. Uh, and we will certainly be in touch with you with questions beyond today, I'm sure. So um, thank you for making this connection for us today. Thank you. Um, thank you. I, I just had one question after uh, we're done recording, if that's okay. Okay, sure. Let me go ahead and I'll stop our recording. Okay.